All right, in this video, we are going to talk about nth roots of complex numbers, which is a topic that some students kind of fear, but um, it's really not that bad. Uh, so let's kind of get the basics down. So uh, we have a complex number a plus bi, and to find the nth roots, we want to raise it to the 1 over n power. Uh, the nth root of a complex number is a number that you can raise to the nth power to get that complex number. Um, so we need to know a couple things, because we don't actually operate with this a plus bi form. Um, or rectangular form when we do this. So the first thing we need to know is that we can uh, calculate r. So r is, uh, if, you, if you're aware of this, it's actually the absolute value of a plus bi. Uh, it's the distance from that to kind of the origin if you plot the point a comma b. Um, so it's really important that you realize that when you do this, you do not include um, the i, right? Because if you square i, you get negative one, it kind of screws everything up. So r is the square root of a squared plus b squared, which Hopefully you're familiar with. You've been probably doing that a lot if you're in kind of like a trig or a pre-cal class. Uh, we also need to find theta. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to find the reference angle. So I'm going to call it theta hat. It's the inverse tangent of the absolute value of b over a for a variety of reasons. Hopefully uh, you're familiar with those. Um, it gets into kind of the range of arc 10. You want to avoid like a negative and whatever. Um, so the actual value of theta is going to depend on what quadrant the ordered pair a comma b is in. Um, and just to review for you, so we have four quadrants. So in the first quadrant, theta is just the same as theta hat. Um, in the second quadrant, it's going to be pi minus theta hat. Um, in the third, it's pi plus. And then in the fourth, uh, when you're finding nth roots, instead of doing 2 pi minus theta hat, it's much easier to say that theta is equal to the negative of theta hat. Um, because it keeps the numbers a little lower, and you'll see that we have to kind of multiply some things and, and add as we do this. Okay, so having done all of these things, we found r, we found theta, uh, we can actually rewrite a plus bi as um, r and then the quantity cosine theta plus i sine theta, which again, hopefully you're familiar with this. Um, this I call a polar form or trig form, um, and I frequently use the abbreviation because cosine plus i sine is really annoying to write as r cis theta, but you have to remember that cis stands for cosine plus i sine. Um, and then the easiest way to understand where these come from, I think, is to use um, something called, called Euler's formula, which is actually um, e to the i theta equals cosine theta plus i sine theta. So what we can do is we can rewrite this as just um, r e to the i theta. Um, and that's actually really key because now we can actually just find the nth roots by using properties of exponents and coterminal angles. So uh, let's figure out why that's true. So what we do, um, oh yeah, that's using Euler's in case you want to look it up. Um, so what we do, uh, our e to the i theta is actually, because of coterminal angles, um, equal to r e to the i theta plus 2 pi k, um, where k is an element of the integers. And that's just uh, theta plus 2 pi k is always coterminal to theta. So those have the same, if we rewrite them in rectangular form, those would have exactly the same representation. So knowing this, I can say that a plus bi is equal to r e to the i theta plus 2 pi times k, um, and raise both sides of this to the 1 over n power. So if I do that, then the right-hand side becomes something I can work with. The left-hand side is still kind of a mystery, um, but I can work with the right-hand side, right? I get r to the 1 over n. And then by properties of exponents, I get um, e to the i. And then what I do is I move the, um, so when you raise a power to a power, you multiply the powers. Um, and so I'm bringing the n inside the parentheses and using it as the denominator. Um, so I have this. And now what I need to do, though, is I need to figure out, like, k can be any integer. But at some point, I'm just kind of doubling up the work that I've done. So let's figure that out. If k is equal to 0, um, the angle just becomes theta over n which is important. That's kind of like your base for your first nth root. Um, if k is 1, I'm, again, I'm just really just plugging into the formula at this point. Uh, so I get this. This is kind of a new angle, presumably. Um, k equals 2. We get this. And we keep going, right? And we can keep going, actually, forever. So at some point, we're going to hit k is equal to n. So when we get to k is equal to n, the formula looks like this. So it's 2 pi over n times n, but you'll notice that cancels out. So that's really the same as just theta over n plus 2 pi. But theta over n plus 2 pi is actually just coterminal to the original. 
So if we go all the way to n, we just start duplicating roots. Um, and every complex number has n nth roots. Um, so if we go from 0 to n minus 1, that'll give us the n nth roots that we're looking for. So the values of k we can have are 0, 1, all the way up to n minus 1. Um, so that's kind of the basic idea. Uh, but you'll probably see it written in a, a slightly different way. Um, because the exponential form using Euler's formula is like less common for whatever reason. I don't actually know the reason because it's kind of easier to work with. Um, so you'll probably see it like this, r to the 1 over n, sys, theta plus 2 pi k over n, where k can go from 0 to n minus 1. So let's do one example, um, and then maybe I'll make another video where I do a couple more. So the example we're going to do is find the cube roots of negative 27 root 2 over 2, plus 27 root 2 over 2i. So uh, I'm going to do this, uh, everyone does these in kind of like an a informal way. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the 27 and realize that what I really have here is kind of the unit circle point, negative root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2, um, which is an angle that I recognize. And then uh, I'm like going out 27 units, so it's kind of like on a circle with a radius of 27. So in this case, r is actually 27. You could calculate it by doing the square root of a squared plus b squared, but that's a lot of work, and we already know what it is. Um, and then the angle I recognize is 3 pi over 4. And then, obviously, cube roots means that n is equal to 3. So I actually know r, theta, and n, and that's all I know, all I need, rather. Um, so I'm going to write, I'm going to call this z just to simplify things. So z to the one-third is 27 to the one-third, sys, and now I'm just plugging everything in here, and k goes from 0 to 2, because I stop at n minus 1, so n is 3, so 0, 1, 2. And now I just plug in, so if k is equal to 0, I get this, which I'm tempted to expand because that's a unit circle angle, but I'm going to leave it just because, uh, like, this video is not really about that. Um, so if k is equal to 1, I get pi over 4, and then I'm going to add 2 pi over 3 to that because k is equal to 1, you go back to the formula, and then that gives you 11 pi over 12, so 3 sys 11 pi over 12, and if k is equal to 2, it's going to be pi over 4, and then plus 2 times 2 pi over 3, so plus 4 pi over 3, which gives me 3 sys 19 pi over 12, and uh, those are the cube roots. If you cube those, you get back to um, the original, which I'm not going to bother to do because it definitely works, um, but what I do want to show you is um, how you can kind of graph these. So if I have a uh, real on the horizontal, imaginary on the uh, vertical, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph a circle that has a radius of 3, and then an angle at pi over 4. So this will let me graph the first of them, which I'm going to call z sub 0. So that's the first of the cube roots. And then what I do is I'm going to rotate 2 pi over 3 from there, and I get to 11 pi over 12. And then the intersection of that angle in the circle is z sub 1, where I let k equal 1. Then I rotate 2 pi over 3 from there, and I get to 19 pi over 12. So a rotation again of 2 pi over 3. And that'll take me to z sub 2. And then if I rotate 2 pi over 3 again, I get back to the original, so I know I'm done. Um, so that's how you actually go about finding the nth roots of a complex number. I uh, hope you found this helpful, and good luck.